Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook, Marvel's Hogwarts Wizards. Chapter 36. Pushing the door open and entering the room, Jerry saw that his luggage had been placed next to the bed closest to the door in advance. The bed was a traditional four-poster, with green silk hangings and silver thread embroidery on the bedspread. Likewise, the windows in this room were also enchanted, allowing one to see the lake outside and even hear the subtle sound of the water rippling on the lake. It should be very good to fall asleep in the sound of gently fluctuating lake water. No wonder the prefect just said that the lounge in Slytherin was the best among the four houses. If the discharge is too green, it is indeed very good. Okay, Crookshanks, don't worry, I'll let you out right away. Seeing Crookshanks meowing at him in the cage on the table beside the bed, Jerry hurriedly raised his hand to appease him, and at the same time stepped forward to open the cage. Because Crookshanks is very smart and can find food by himself, Jerry never locked him in a cage when he was in the orphanage. This is the first time, maybe anxious. Meow. As soon as Jerry opened the cage, Crookshanks immediately let out an excited meow, and then turned into a flash of yellow lightning, and quickly rushed towards the window of the room. Crookshanks, stop. With a twitch in his heart, Jerry immediately realized what was happening, and hurriedly yelled at Crookshanks. However, it was too late. I saw Crookshanks looking out of the window, all kinds of big and small fish swimming around, with excitement in their eyes, and then they bumped into the invisible magic barrier in the middle of the window. It's like bumping your head against a layer of transparent glass. Puff. Crookshanks slid down from the barrier, and the already flat pie face seemed to become even flatter. Oh, silly cat, I take back what I just said about you being smart. Seeing this, Jerry covered his forehead in both amused and helpless ways. However, as a cat with the blood of Maolizi, Crookshanks' body is much stronger than that of ordinary cats, this impact is obviously nothing to it. It stood up again in a little confusion, then lay on the window, scratched the invisible magic barrier with its paws, tilted its head and looked at the fish swimming outside, and seemed to start to doubt the cat's life. Seeing this, Jerry didn't care about it anymore, but started to pack his luggage and picked up the class schedule on the table. And at this time, there were a few familiar shouts and curses from the door of the room, and it was the little Malfoy trio who saw Jerry's name at the door. Hello. Seeing the young Malfoy trio entering through the door, Jerry greeted them friendly. Since they are both Slytherins and live in the same room, he still feels that the relationship between the young Malfoy trio can be eased a little. After all, although the young Malfoy and the other three were somewhat villainous, they were not heinous people. Let me tell you, I'm not afraid of you, my father is the director of Hogwarts, if you dare to do anything to me again, I will let my father expel you. And wizards should use magic to duel. After learning magic well, we should use magic to have a fair duel. Quote. Little Malfoy had obviously made a decision outside. After pushing the door and entering the room, he immediately took Goyle and Crab to stand five meters away from Jerry, and said loudly in a vicious tone. No problem, really, I don't like to use violence, as long as you don't take the initiative to provoke me, I won't do anything to you. Jerry shrugged and agreed without hesitation. Seeing this, the three of Malfoy finally breathed a sigh of relief. Don't look at the three of them arrogantly in front of other little wizards, especially muggle little wizards, looking like I am invincible. In fact, it was just three 11-year-old children. After the train was repaired and threatened by Jerry, I have left some shadows in my heart. From the original book, the trio of Malfoy were in the train, only to be bitten by Ron's mouse, and then ran away in a panic, which shows that they are not as courageous as they appear on the outside. After formally reaching an agreement to live in peace, the little Malfoy trio were no longer as afraid of Jerry as before, but began to pack their own luggage and beds. At night, when the trio of Little Pony Foo fell into a deep sleep, Jerry got up quietly and left the room with the magic book. Unlike other little wizards who were exhausted after this day, with his physical fitness, he didn't expend too much energy this day at all. It's just that the accident of being assigned to Slytherin really caught him off guard. Therefore, everything that was planned before has to be overthrown and restarted now. Unlike Gryffindor, in the Slytherin Academy, if he wanted to gain the greatest possible benefits, then he had to be excellent, excellent in all aspects, and crushingly excellent. Just like Lao Fu when he was young. 
Lao Fu was also born in a Mughal orphanage and was of mixed blood, but he was able to thrive in Slytherin, where family background and blood were paramount, and he became an idol worshipped by all Slytherins. It's because he's so good. When he was in Hogwarts, Voldemort was born in poverty but was extremely smart. His parents died but he was wise and courageous. He was the school's prefect, school grass, male god and model student. He seemed polite, quiet, and voracious for knowledge. Almost everyone has a good impression of him. Especially Slughorn, the dean of Slytherin at the time, loved him so much that he even told him about the forbidden horcruxes he asked about. Jerry wants to learn as much magic as possible at Hogwarts, so Lao Fu is his role model. However, if he is based on his own learning ability, he will definitely not be able to do it. Let alone topping the entire grade, it is not bad to be ranked in the middle level. Therefore, he plans to change his strategy and use a lot of little red stars to speed up the progress of learning. His original plan was to use Little Red Star as much as possible to maintain the time in the wizarding world and to use it when learning some important spells. After all, history of magic, astronomy, and herbalism are not urgently needed, and they can be made up for later when you earn more Little Red Stars. And every time he returns, he can only re-enter after the main world cools down for a month. Now, if he wants to learn from Lao Fu, he must use a lot of Little Red Stars, strive to surpass everyone in every subject, and become the best student, so that he can gain a foothold in Slytherin. Mainly, he had nothing to do with Snape, if he wasn't good enough, he wouldn't be in Snape's eyes. Came to the common room of Slytherin, under the green light of the lounge, Jerry sat on the sofa, turned on the, refreshing, function, opened the magic book, and began to memorize the, history of magic, that will be presented tomorrow. According to the timetable, Slytherin had only one class on the first day, and that was History of Magic, which was held in the afternoon with the students of Ron Claw. The teacher is the ghost Cuthbert Cuthbert Bins, and the place is on the second floor. At noon the next day, after having lunch in the auditorium on the first floor, Jerry, together with other young Slytherin wizards, walked along the luxurious marble staircase to the History of Magic classroom on the second floor. During the meal, Jerry also met Hermione who was assigned to Gryffindor. Hermione expressed regret that Jerry was not assigned to Gryffindor, but she said that Jerry was still her best friend even in Slytherin. In class, Cuthbert Binns, a ghost who looks very old, is talking about the history of magic in his wheezing, dragging voice. And in the classroom, most of the Slytherins and when Keela's little wizards were already crumbling under the hypnotic voice of Cuthbert Binns. However, there was a young wizard who was quite different from the others. He sat in the first row with a straight back and piercing eyes. The hypnotic voice of Cuthbert Binns didn't seem to have any influence on him. He is Jerry who turns on, refreshing, intermittently. A history of magic session lasted for two to three hours, and Jerry couldn't keep turning on, refresh, because it would be too heavy a burden on the brain. So some textbooks have content, he turns off, refreshing, and when Cuthbert Binns extends to some additional content, he turns on, refreshing, memory comprehension. In fact, the history of magic class is not as useless as other little wizards said, although it does not teach any magic knowledge or magic spells. But if you study hard, you will find that you can learn a lot of secrets about the wizarding world from these magical histories. Jerry's understanding of the wizarding world is limited to movies and some small videos, which are very one-sided. And Cuthbert Binns' history of magic class showed the whole wizarding world in front of him in a more realistic and detailed way. This is also very helpful for him to learn magic knowledge in the future. Just like if you want to learn the language, characters and a lot of their unique knowledge and culture of a completely strange country, it will be very difficult. But when you know all the history of the country, then this learning becomes much less difficult. This may be why all the little wizards feel that history of magic is the most useless course, but it runs through every grade of the little wizards at Hogwarts. Okay, that's all for today's lesson, now let's start asking questions, does anyone know the demon Emmerich that I just talked about? When the get out of class was about to end, Cuthbert Binns began to enter the questioning session as usual. Generally, he would not give any hope for this link, because at this time, most of the young wizards have just woken up, and few of them know the answer. But he didn't mind, because his class had always been like this. 
Sure enough, the sleepy-eyed little wizards began to look at each other when they heard Cuthbert Bin's question. Just when Cuthbert Bin's was about to announce the dismissal of class, Jerry in the front row raised his hand. What's your name? Jerry Carmen. Jerry stood up and replied. Then it's up to you to answer the question just now. A look of surprise appeared on Cuthbert Bin's aged face. Jerry coughed, and after attracting the attention of all the little wizards, he began to speak. Emmerich the demon was a short-lived but extremely powerful wizard. He once became the master of the Elder Wand and carried out a reign of terror in southern England in the early Middle Ages. He was in a duel with Egbert the evil being, slaughtered, he once. You see, the Elder Wand was actually mentioned by Cuthbert Binns in his first year history of magic class. Very good, three points for Slytherin. Cuthbert Binns did not expect that what he said in class would be repeated verbatim by this student, which is very rare. Mr. Carmen, can you tell us more about Ulrich the Weird? Ulrich the Odd is a medieval wizard known for his erratic behavior, such as wearing a jellyfish as a hat and sleeping in a room with more than 50 pet birds. He's considered one of the eccentric wizards in history, and as such, he's often the butt of wizarding jokes. Jerry continued to retell the content recorded in class, word for word. Jerry, you are one of the students with the best memory I have ever seen, three more points for Slytherin. As Cuthbert Bin's voice fell, those little Slytherin wizards who were not clear at first applauded happily. The importance of credits was clearly explained by Professor McGonagall when he entered Hogwarts Castle yesterday, and the College Cup obtained through credits is the highest honor for Hogwarts wizards. So proud Slytherins, seeing the first class, Jerry earned six credits for Slytherin, how can you not be unhappy? Originally, at the opening dinner yesterday, Jerry was able to negotiate gracefully and calmly with the terrifying blood man Barrow, which impressed the first year Slytherins deeply, and at this time they had a very good impression of him. Except, of course, the little Malfoy trio. Being able to communicate gracefully and calmly with the terrifying blood man Baron reflects Jerry's courage, and being able to earn six points for Slytherin in the history of magic reflects Jerry's wisdom. Although the Slytherins are proud, as long as you have no problem with your bloodline, the more outstanding you are, the more they will favor you. As we all know, if they can be assigned to Slytherin in the sorting ceremony, there must be no problem in terms of bloodline. After the end of History of Magic, Jerry clearly felt the pride of the little Slytherin wizards, and began to actively communicate with him. One of them, a little blonde witch named Daphne Greengrass, was the most enthusiastic. The first period in the morning of the second day was defense against the dark arts class. The teacher was Professor Quirrell, who smelled like garlic and had his hair wrapped like a rice dumpling. He always stuttered in class. But Jerry didn't dare to underestimate Professor Quirrell. Because he knew that Professor Quirrell, who was born in Lowen Keluo, was definitely not weak, otherwise it would be impossible to avoid the defense of Gringotts and sneak in to steal the Philosopher's Stone. Besides, the ultimate villain of the world, Voldemort, is hidden on the back of his head. In fact, despite the cowardly and cowardly appearance this professor deliberately pretended to be, it is not useless to listen carefully to the content of his lectures. After at least one class, Jerry did have a deeper understanding of the magic in the textbook. The magic spell does not mean that you can exert its greatest power after learning it. Just like an ordinary fire spell, Jerry can only use it to light cigarettes now, but Dumbledore's use can burn thousands of inferi. On the one hand, the magic power in Dumbledore's body is much stronger than that of Jerry, but more importantly, Dumbledore's understanding of the fire curse is beyond the reach of ordinary wizards. Quirrell didn't ask any questions during the entire defense against the dark arts class, so Jerry naturally didn't have a chance to get credits. But he is not in a hurry. Learning magic to improve his strength is the ultimate goal. Obtaining credits to increase his popularity can be done slowly, and there are plenty of opportunities. In the next few days, Jerry took herbal medicine, astronomy, charms and transfiguration. Since he turns on the, refreshing, function for a long time every night to quickly memorize and learn magic books, he also turns on the, refreshing, function periodically during class. Therefore, in the class of herbal medicine, he can always say it accurately at the first time. Professor Sprout asked the name of each herbal medicine and their various properties. In astronomy, he can also easily identify any stars and constellations. 
And in the spell class, when other little wizards are still learning the theory of spells, he can successfully release the corresponding magic in the textbook. Although the power and effect are not great, he is very skilled in using it. As for the transformation class, when Professor McGonagall ended the lecture, he asked everyone to practice turning a match into a needle. Under Professor McGonagall's exclamation, Jerry completed the exercise in less than 10 seconds and successfully became the first little wizard to turn a match into a silver needle. It is precisely because of this that Jerry took more than 20 credits for Slytherin in four days, and initially left a very good impression on all the teachers. He also made a name for himself in various colleges. In particular, Jerry was not like Hermione. With his adult soul, any little wizard who took the initiative to get in touch with him felt that although he was very good, he was not as arrogant and difficult to get along with as ordinary Slytherins. On the contrary, he is very humble and easygoing, and sometimes he will make a joke or two with you. This also made him earn more than 20 credits for Slytherin, but the young wizards in the other three academies who had contacted him did not feel too much jealousy towards him, but rather admired him to some extent. Because now, except for a little wizard named Hermione and Gryffindor, no one earns as much credits as Jerry. In this way, the time came to Friday. There is only half a day of classes in the morning on Friday, and it is the potions class taught by Slytherin headmaster Snape. It is also the first time that the two colleges, Slytherin and Gryffindor, have classes together. None of the previous lessons, either with Lowenclaw or Hufflepuff, were with Gryffindor. The potions classroom was in the basement, very close to the common room where Slater was. Because there is no sunshine all year round, the classroom feels a bit gloomy, especially the glass jars placed along the walls, which are soaked with various animal specimens. Hey, Jerry, you're here early. Hermione, you're early too. Jerry has the habit of getting up early, so he finished his breakfast very early and came to the potions classroom. He was the first little wizard to enter the classroom. And Hermione is usually the first one to enter the classroom in each class, so the two happened to run into each other. Since no one else had arrived, the two naturally sat together and chatted. Since the two of them were assigned to different colleges, they didn't usually take classes together, so they didn't have much time to chat except for a few words during meals. The point is, Hermione is a top student, and she studies whenever she has free time. In order to improve his strength, Jerry also absorbs all kinds of magical knowledge non-stop. Jerry, are you free this weekend? How about we go to the library together? Hermione looked at Jerry expectantly. She had memorized the first grade textbooks during the summer vacation. After asking the prefect Percy, Hermione knew that Hogwarts also had a library, and there were many magic books in it. So I wanted to take a look at it when I was free on Friday. Just now I met Jerry who also likes to read, so I sent an invitation to go to the library together. And Jerry's eyes lit up when he heard the word library. In the past two days, he was busy memorizing the books, History of Magic, A Thousand Miraculous Herbs and Fungi, and Magic Potions and Potions, so he really didn't have time to consider going to the Hogwarts library. Do you know where the library is? I've already inquired about it in advance, it's on the second floor of the castle, in the corridor on the far right. Hermione replied immediately. Okay, let's go there early on Saturday morning. Jerry nodded, accepting Hermione's invitation. While Jerry was chatting with Hermione, Slytherin and the little wizards of Gryffindor also walked into the potions class one after another. Among them, Harry and Ron sat on the other side of Hermione, and also participated in the chat between the two. At this time, the chat also shifted from magical knowledge to the magical experiences they had seen at Hogwarts these days. However, the two obviously disliked some of Hermione's, showing off, and preaching from time to time, especially Hermione also mentioned the scandal of the two being reprimanded by Professor McGonagall for being late to the Transfiguration class. They were more interested in what Jerry had mentioned, about the large windows in the Slytherin common room that looked out over the lake. Jerry, as a Slater, I must remind you that it is not a good thing to be in contact with some impure blood and traitors, and you will be affected. At this time, a haughty and slightly sour voice suddenly rang in Jerry's ears. Jerry turned his head to look. It turned out to be Daphne, the little blonde witch of Slytherin, sitting next to her with her best friend Millicent. 
Daphne was attracted by the handsome Jerry at the school opening dinner, who didn't change his face when facing the bloody barrow, and later Jerry's excellent performance in various disciplines. It also satisfied all the fantasies she should have about a real Slytherin. It's a pity that Jerry seems to like to be alone. Occasionally, when she comes up to talk to her, the other party will show a charming smile and chat with her for a few words, but the chat ends because she wants to read a book. Although Jerry read a book quietly in the common room, she felt pretty good. But when she entered the classroom just now, she saw Jerry chatting happily with the little wizards of Gryffindor, and she immediately felt unhappy. There are three Gryffindors, one is a lowly mudblood, one is Weasley who betrayed his blood and joined Gryffindor, and the other is Harry Potter who should have entered Slytherin but went to Gryffindor. Forehead. Hearing what Daphne said next to him, Jerry was also taken aback but he didn't think there was anything wrong with Daphne. After all, as a Slytherin, it seemed normal for Daphne to have such thoughts. Because of the education and environment she received since she was a child. But Jerry wasn't a normal Slytherin, and he didn't have the rotten ideas of a Slytherin. The strength of a person has nothing to do with the purity of blood, the most important thing is his own strength. External things are only external after all, as long as you are strong enough, then you are the one who makes the rules. Classmate Daphne, no one can influence me. I, Jerry Carmen, as a Slytherin, will definitely become the most powerful wizard in this world. Jerry looked at Daphne firmly, exuding a breathtaking aura all over his body. Daphne was taken aback when she saw this, the dissatisfaction in her eyes just now disappeared, and all that was left was full of admiration. My charm, he, Tui, it should be that this line is really good enough, but children really like it. As a Slater, if he refuted Daphne's words at this time, saying that the pure blood theory is incorrect, blah, 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 blah. But if he were to draw a clear line with Hermione and others now, it would not be in his heart, and now the entire academy, it is true that Hermione can keep up with his progress, communicate with him and make progress together. Besides, a good relationship with Harry will most likely have many positive effects on Dumbledore's side. You see, such a good Slytherin, who has no blood prejudice, is willing to be friends with Gryffindor, a little muggle-born wizard. Not exactly what Dumbledore wanted to see. Otherwise, in case Dumbledore treated him like a second Voldemort, it would be a little bad. Jerry, the best wizard is not necessarily you, but also me. At this moment, Hermione replied somewhat unconvinced. And Harry and Ron next to Hermione looked at Jerry with a look of admiration. HMPH, how can you compare with Jerry? Daphne at the side immediately mocked Hermione. At this moment, the entire potions classroom suddenly fell silent as quiet as a needle could be heard. It turned out that Professor Snape, who was dressed in a black wizard robe and had an expression that could scare a three-year-old into tears, had already appeared at the door of the potions classroom. Which professor in Hogwarts scares little wizards the most? Not the most powerful Dumbledore, known as the greatest wizard, nor the most serious and strict Professor McGonagall in the school. Instead, he is expressionless all day long, looking very gloomy, as if whenever he gets angry, he will give you the most terrifying and evil black magic Professor Snape. Even the young wizards of Slytherin were terrified when they saw their headmaster. Snape held his wand in one hand and the potions textbook in the other, striding up to the podium like a giant bat. Like other professors, he first took out the roster. But when he clicked on Harry, he suddenly paused, then raised his head and gave Harry a sharp look, and mocked in a low voice. Harry Potter, this is our new arrival, a famous character. The little Malfoy trio sitting in the back laughed while covering their mouths. After speaking, Snape continued to roll the roll. When he clicked on Jerry Carmen, he paused again, with a little appreciation in his tone. It's excellent. Compared with some people who have no real name, they have obtained more than 20 credits at the beginning of the school. This is called excellent. Polaris, Snape really hates Harry, or rather prefers Slater's students. Jerry groaned inwardly. You know, the credits that Hermione has earned these days are not much less than him, 
but Hermione is earning credits for Gryffindor, so when Snape called the role just now, she just skipped it. Little Malfoy, who had laughed at Harry being mocked by Snape, turned green when he heard Jerry being praised, as green as the lights in the Slytherin common room. Putting down the roster, Snape looked at all the little wizards in the classroom with cold and empty eyes, and briefly introduced the subject of potions. Jerry summed it up, that is to say, this subject is very good and powerful, and those who can't learn it are fools. After the opening remarks, Snape immediately launched a series of sharp questions about potions to Harry. Harry was not Hermione, or a normal little wizard, and it was impossible for him to memorize the difficult book, Magic Potions and Potions, before school started. With this, he taunted Harry again. Even Jerry, who had anticipated that situation, couldn't help but sympathize with Harry for a few seconds. If Harry hadn't been at his aunt's house since he was a child, he had already suffered countless grievances and developed a strong heart. If it was any other little wizard, he would probably be scared to tears by Snape now. In fact, Jerry knew that although Snape was willing to protect Harry with his own life, it was because Harry was the child of Lily, Snape's favorite woman. With a very similar appearance to his former rival James, and being in Gryffindor, it was hard for Snape not to hate Harry. If it was Harley and Slytherin entered again, Snape probably wouldn't have the same attitude. Jerry Carmen, you answer the few questions just now. After a while of taunting, Snape looked at Harry's green eyes like lilies, paused for a moment, and ordered to Jerry, ignoring Hermione, who was already raising her hand next to Harry. Jerry sighed helplessly, but stood up anyway. In fact, he didn't want to get involved now, after all, Harry was miserable, and Hermione raised her hand so high. However, Snape had already called him by name directly, so he had no choice but to stand up and answer honestly. Narcissus root powder and wormwood can be mixed together to make a powerful sleeping pill, which is a dose of life and death water. Coprolites are stones taken from the stomach of goats, which have a strong detoxifying effect. As for the aconite it is the same plant as Chimajasma aconitum, and they are collectively called aconitum. 10 points for Slytherin, Snape nodded in satisfaction, and the little Slytherin wizard burst into cheers. Even Goyle and Crabbe couldn't hold back their applause, but they were finally stopped by a look from Malfoy. Just add 10 points, as expected of you, Professor Snape. Snape was so blatantly partial that Jerry was a little embarrassed. Also, Potter, Gryffindor will take one point off for contradicting the teacher just now. Snape added one last word, and began to group the young wizards in pairs. And Harry was helpless even though he was angry. Seeing this, Jerry had no choice but to pat him on the shoulder through Hermione to comfort him. There is no way, who made your father always bully others when he was in school, now that your father is gone, he can only vent his anger on you. Maybe this is called the son inheriting the father's business, oh, no, it should be the father's debt and the son's repayment. When grouping, because the number of Gryffindors was relatively large and the number of Slytherins was relatively small, and they were all odd numbers, so Jerry and Hermione were divided into a group and cooperated to complete a potion for treating boils. In the magic book, Magic Potion and Potion, in addition to explaining in detail the steps, details and precautions of basic potion refining, it also provides a total of seven kinds of potion refining methods. They are, General Antidote, Potion for Treating Boils, Amnesia Potion, Herbicide Potion, Sleeping Potion, Water of Life and Death, Swelling Potion, Sober Potion. After the distribution was over, Snape first explained the whole potion refining process, and then demonstrated how to make a bottle by himself. The preparation of potions is actually very similar to those chemical experiments in Jerry's previous life when he was in school. They are all prepared precisely according to the formula by using various instruments such as small medicine bottles and scales. Care and rigor are the most important things in the refining of potions. However, unlike ordinary chemical experiments, the desired results can be obtained by completing the modulation according to the steps. For the refining of potions, if you just follow the steps, you will end up with a puddle of useless mixture. It also needs to cooperate with the magic power in the body, and finally use the magic wand to finish the potion, in order to get the correct and effective magic potion. Therefore, if you are just a muggle without magic power, even if you get the materials and production methods for refining potions, you will not be able to really refine the corresponding potions. 
You fool, don't you have eyes, what do you call dried nettles? Idiot, it's the fangs of a crushing snake, do you know what crushing means? When the little wizards began to follow the steps to make the potion, Snape also dragged his long black cloak and walked up and down the classroom to check. However, his scolding almost never stopped. All the little wizards he passed by were sprayed with blood by him. Even the little wizards of Slytherin are no exception, they will still be scolded if they make mistakes. Only when he got to the group of Jerry and Hermione, did he nod his head in satisfaction and give a few words of praise. At this time, Jerry has already turned on the refreshing mode, and his brain and body are in peak condition. Together with Hermione, who is very talented in potions, he can make the simplest potion. Of course, there is no problem. Done. Not long after Snape left from behind, pink smoke rose from the cauldron in front of Jerry and Hermione, which also indicated that the boil potion had been successfully concocted. Oops. At this moment, Neville and Seamus in the next group suddenly let out a scream. Their cauldrons leaked for some unknown reason, the potion spilled, and thick green acidic smoke suddenly rose. Chain legs. Jerry, who was refreshed, had five senses and reactions so fast. The moment he saw an accident on Neville and Seamus' side, he immediately lifted their buttocks towards them, kicking them in a row. Kicked Neville and Seamus away with soft strength so that they would not be sprayed by the green smoke, then immediately turned around and hugged Hermione and jumped onto the stool next to him to prevent them from being sprayed by the extremely corrosive potion erosion. Even so, Harry and Ron, who were on Neville's other side, had the potion splashed on their shoes, burning several holes in them. It can be seen that the preparation of this potion is not so safe. One mistake in the experiment may cost one's life. And this is the simplest potion preparation. Thinking about it, there are so few masters of potion science in the wizarding world, which may have a lot to do with the danger of preparing potions. If there is no talent in potion preparation, not only will the preparation fail, a lot of precious raw materials will be wasted, and your own life may be in danger. Idiot. Snape snarled and walked over, swiping his wand to wipe away the potion and green smoke that had been spilled on the ground. I suppose you put the porcupine quills in the cauldron without removing it from the fire, did you? Neville and Seamus got up from the ground and said nothing, obviously acquiescing. Because of your idiot behavior, Gryffindor has been deducted one point, go back and remodulate. After Snape finished cursing, he looked back at Jerry and nodded in satisfaction. Your reaction was quick, if it wasn't for you, the two of them would have gone to the infirmary just now. Three points for Slytherin. After speaking, he happened to see the potion prepared by Jerry and Hermione on the table, his eyes lit up. You actually prepared it so quickly, um, yes, quite perfect, a very good potion, it seems that you are very talented in potions, Slater will add three points. Ahem, this, professor, the potion was concocted by me and Hermione. Seeing that Snape ignored Hermione directly, Jerry had no choice but to remind him. Snape glanced at Hermione. Well, Gryffindor also adds three points. After speaking, he began to patrol the classroom again. But when he walked in front of Harry and Ron, he suddenly paused again, and turned to look at Harry who was cooking the tentacled slug. Potter, why didn't you tell Neville not to add the porcupine quills? You thought it would be okay if he made a mistake. Gryffindor lost another point for you. Harry petrified on the spot. Potions class was over, and when all the little wizards left the classroom to go to the auditorium for dinner, Jerry excused himself to go back to the dormitory and temporarily escaped from the crowd. Carefully observing the corridor in the basement, and making sure that Snape had returned to his office, Jerry came to the door of the potions classroom again. Allahu hole is open. Casting an unlocking charm on the classroom door, Jerry pushed it open and walked in. After carefully turning around in the classroom, he immediately set his sights on the locker next to the podium. That locker was where Snape kept some potion ingredients that he used to use in class. Opening the locker and rummaging through it, Jerry finally found what he wanted in the bottom layer of the locker, a secondhand sixth grade potions textbook, Advanced Potion Making. Turning to the first page of the book, a line of handwritten signatures appeared in his eyes. The book belongs to the Half-Blood Prince. According to what Jerry learned from watching the movie before, the title of Half-Blood Prince was given to him by Snape when he was in school. And this sixth-grade potions textbook recorded a lot of Snape's experience in potions. 
Of course, most of these potion experiences will not be used until the 6th grade potion refining, and it is not very useful to memorize them now. Just like the formulas used in advanced mathematics, even if they are memorized, it is difficult to be flexible used in elementary school addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So Jerry got the 6th grade potion experience now, which is not very helpful for his current 1st grade potion study. However, what he valued was not Snape's experience with potions, what he really valued were the few spells that Snape had invented in the Half-Blood Prince's notebook. Especially the most famous, Shen Feng Wuying, Curse. This is a spell that Jerry values very much at the moment. It doesn't mean how powerful he is. Judging from the fact that Harry only severely injured Malfoy after using it in the movie, the lethality of the Shadowless Curse is not that strong. Because hits such as binding spells and stun spells can be directly controlled, killing spells are sure to kill, and Shen Feng Wying spells are only serious injuries. Of course, it might be that Harry was not proficient in using it. If Snape used it, it might be more lethal. But don't forget, even if it's a little wizard in the first or second grade, if he uses, all petrification, he can still freeze people in place and cannot move. However, even so, Jerry is still very fond of Shen Feng Wang curse. Because this spell has a very prominent advantage, that is, it is invisible and invisible when it is released, and it cannot be detected at all. Generally, when a normal spell is released, a beam of magic light is shot out, which is very conspicuous, just like the killing curse, when it is shot out, a green light flies towards you. Although death is inevitable, if you react fast enough and predict accurately enough, there is still a chance to miss it. However, the release of the Shadowless Curse does not have any magical light. The release of the Shadowless Curse is like releasing an invisible blade. Unless you are protected by the Iron Armor Curse in advance, it is difficult to detect. This advantage may not be particularly obvious in the wizarding world. Because wizards have good physical fitness, but their speed and reaction ability are not very different from normal humans, so in many cases, they cannot rely on their bodies to dodge magic attacks. Shooting a spell from a wand is the same as shooting a bullet from a gun. With the speed of magic and bullets, ordinary people can't dodge at all. Even if there is a successful dodge, it is not because his speed is faster than magic or bullets, but because he has predicted the attack trajectory in advance and dodged in advance through the movement of the opponent's arm waving. There are very few wizards who can do this, so they all choose not to dodge but to use magic defense, cast an armor spell, or directly face the waves. However, in the Marvel world, there are still quite a few guys whose bodies are beyond ordinary people and who can dodge bullets. Ordinary magic is shot, if the opponent's physical fitness is strong, like a flash bullet, then his magic will hardly cause damage. At this time, the Shen Feng Shadowless Curse comes in handy. When released, it is invisible and invisible, and it can cause damage to the opponent without the opponent's knowledge. This is also the magic spell that he planned to obtain from the very beginning. However, because he was busy memorizing the textbooks before, he didn't spare time. Now he has basically finished memorizing all the textbooks, and he happened to come to Potions class today, so he took them away. Holding the Half-Blood Prince's note, Jerry first returned to the Slytherin lounge, hid the book in the suitcase, and then returned to the auditorium on the first floor for lunch. There was no class on Friday afternoon, and after lunch, he returned to the dormitory again. The three of Malfoy were not in the dormitory. In fact, some boys of this age were willing to stay in the dormitory during the day, and they were mostly exploring the castle. After taking a break to recover the energy consumed by turning on, rejuvenation, in potions class in the morning, he was alone in the dormitory in the afternoon, studying the few self-created spells that Snape recorded in his notes. There are a total of six spells recorded in the notes, namely, God's Shadowless Curse, Quick Healing Curse, Upside Down Fuchsia Curse, Admiralty Falling Curse, Ear Closing Curse, and Toenail Growth Curse. After reading and writing down all the six spells, Jerry realized that the Shadowless Curse not only has the characteristic of invisibility and shadowlessness but also has the characteristic of curse. That is the place where the cut by the Shenfeng Shadowless Curse will be cursed and cannot be healed. Nothing like ordinary healing spells, potions, or muggle medical treatments. Unless with its corresponding counter spell, which was Snape's invention of the instant healing charm. 
Only then did Jerry realize that not all spells can be broken with the universal cracking spell, curse standing. Many special spells need to know the corresponding anti-spell to be able to break the magic effect it produces. Just like if someone is cast with the fuchsia curse and hangs in midair, then he must use the admiralty falling curse to remove it, or wait for the magic effect to disappear by itself. Under the effect of, refreshing the mind, Jerry's brain is running at high speed. However, I don't know if it's because the level of the spell Snape invented is too high, or his current magic theory and knowledge reserves are not enough. After spending a whole afternoon, he didn't even learn a single spell. You must know that when learning those first year spells, it was not as difficult as it is now. It seems that the library is still going. With only the first grade textbook and the content of the teacher's class, it is still difficult to quickly learn a spell of this level like the Shenfeng Wang curse. So he had to learn from classmate Hermione, read those related magic books in the library more, and gain additional magic knowledge in order to improve his magic level. I checked the time, it was past 6 o'clock. With a dazed mind, Jerry left the Slytherin lounge and headed to the Great Hall for dinner. After dinner, he didn't chat with the little Slytherins in the Slytherin common room, but went straight to sleep to recover from the wake-up call he'd had in the afternoon. It is impossible for Jerry to spend a lot of time socializing. His time is so precious, and he consumes little red star every day. Of course, he must use it to study magic and improve his strength. And in Slytherin, as long as you are good enough, as long as you can get a lot of honor for Slytherin, then you are the most beautiful boy in Slytherin. It doesn't matter if you communicate or not. And as the idol of all the little wizards in the future, it is also necessary to keep a proper distance from fans and maintain a sense of mystery. 11 o'clock in the evening. After all the little Slater wizards fell asleep, Jerry, who had replenished his sleep, got up, took the magic book to the common room, turned on the brain-boosting function again, and entered the learning state. Early the next morning, Jerry and Hermione, who had made an appointment earlier, rushed to the library on the second floor together after having breakfast in the auditorium. A lot of books. As soon as she entered the library, Hermione couldn't help but let out an exclamation. Jerry glanced over and nodded in agreement. In the movie, the number of books in the library is not particularly highlighted, so it seems that the library of Hogwarts is not big, and there are not many magic books. But in fact, there are at least thousands of bookshelves and tens of thousands of magic books in the entire library. Also, the history of wizards can be said to be very long, and it involves various fields, and there are many categories, so how can there be fewer related books? Let's get a library card first. After regaining consciousness, Hermione took Jerry and walked over to where the librarian Irma Pants was. On the way, Hermione had already told him that if he wanted to read and borrow books in the library, he had to apply for a library card first. The librarian Irma Pants, a thin and elderly witch, warned Jerry and Hermione in a very stern tone when she heard that Jerry and Hermione were about to apply for a library card. If you cut, tear, dent, soil, damage, throw, drop, or in any other way damage, abuse, or desecrate the books in the library, it is within my power to hold you accountable the most dire consequences. Also, it is forbidden to eat any snacks in the library, and it is not allowed to go to the restricted area without the teacher's signature and approval. Quote. Seeing that both Jerry and Hermione nodded honestly, she tapped the two brand new library cards with her magic wand, registered their information and handed them over to them. The restricted area. With some reluctance, Jerry looked away from the rows of bookshelves that marked the forbidden book section, and walked to the ordinary book section with Hermione, looking for the magic book he needed. In the bookshelves in the restricted area, there must be a lot of magic books that record powerful magic and potions, but without the teacher's signature, it is not so easy to get. In fact, he has thought about whether he should sneak into the library at night and steal the magic book in the restricted area like stealing the notes of the half-blood prince. But after thinking about it, he rejected this whimsical approach. In the potions classroom, apart from some basic herbs for students to practice, there was nothing precious. Even if he sneaked in and was discovered, it would be no big deal. Moreover, the half-blood prince's notes had been kept in the locker for a long time, and Snape didn't often look them up. He took the notes and quickly memorized them before returning them, and Snape probably wouldn't find out. But the library is different, 
especially in the restricted area, there are so many dangerous magic books in it, it is definitely not easy to protect, he is not Harry, there is Dumbledore opening the back door. So it is better not to take this risk for the time being, and then consider it slowly after the strength becomes stronger. There are too many books in the library, and there are also a lot of miscellaneous books. Jerry searched for a while before he found a book that he felt was useful to him now. Research on the development of modern witchcraft. After flipping through it briefly, he found that there were quite a few explanations about magic theory, which was very helpful for him to learn magic spells, so he took the magic book to the reading area on the side, and turned on the, refreshing, function to read it. Stand up. After a while, Hermione also sat next to Jerry with a, guide to medieval witchcraft. In this way, the two sat quietly on the bench and looked at the magic book in their hands. If they encountered something difficult to understand, they would try to communicate and discuss with each other. At the end of the day, I feel that I have gained a lot. Sometimes thinking alone is not as efficient as two people communicating. Jerry felt that if he discussed the advanced spells that Snape had invented with Hermione, it would shorten the time he needed to learn them. But after thinking about it, he didn't choose to do that. It's better not to let others know about his secret learning of magic spells for the time being. If it is leaked out, the good persona he created before will collapse. The Hogwarts library closes at 8 p.m. So after agreeing to continue reading books tomorrow, Jerry and Hermione each borrowed a few magic books with their library cards and left the library. However, when leaving the library, there was an episode. That was when they happened to run into the dour Professor Snape. At that time, when Snape saw Jerry and Hermione coming out of the library talking and laughing, he was taken aback for a moment, and then he didn't know what he thought of, and asked them a few questions in an uncharacteristically gentle tone. One of them asked if he and Hermione had known each other and become friends before going to Hogwarts. At that time, Jerry thought that since he and Hermione met in Diagon Alley, they were indeed friends before entering Hogwarts, so he nodded. Unexpectedly, after Snape got the answer, he was stunned. He sighed, patted Jerry on the shoulder, and told him earnestly, don't lose affection just because he didn't belong to a college. Also, don't get too addicted to magic, don't lose to Harry. It made Jerry a little confused on the spot. With Snape's character, shouldn't he be allowed to get in touch with the stupid Gryffindor less and focus more on learning magic and earning credits for Slytherin? Could it be that he misunderstood something? He didn't want to understand it, so he didn't bother with it anymore, and Jerry continued to focus on learning magic. In the next few days, when there were classes, he would take classes seriously study hard, and actively answer questions to earn credits and improve his reputation. When there is no class in evening time, he will take out the magic books borrowed from the library to further his studies. If there is something you don't understand, talk to Hermione. In fact, he wanted to go to the teacher for advice. However, there are not many teachers at Hogwarts, and almost most of them have to teach seven grades. The time is also very tight, it is not so easy to find, and there is not much time to give him detailed guidance. The time soon came to Wednesday of the second week. On this day, on the bulletin board in the Slytherin common room, he saw a message announcing that he would take flying lessons with Gryffindor tomorrow. Many little wizards were excited by the arrival of flying lessons, especially male little wizards like Malfoy who liked Quidditch. Wednesday night at 10 o'clock. Jerry got up and left the dormitory as usual. But this time he didn't go to the common room to read, but violated Hogwarts curfew and sneaked upstairs. Now there are only more than 30 of his little red stars left, and he can only persist until tomorrow. So he wanted to get a broomstick before returning to the main world at 12 o'clock in the evening. After returning in this way, he can earn little red star more efficiently. Originally, when Jerry entered this time, he stored a total of more than 6,000 little red stars. According to his original plan, he could persist for two months. However, because the branch was assigned to Slytherin, he had to study hard and absorb a lot of magical knowledge, which caused him to consume a lot of little red stars every day to activate the, refreshing, function. Therefore, in just 11 days, only more than 30 of his more than 6,000 little red stars were left. Aside from the fact that he consumed less on the first day, 
Since he started school, he has to turn on the brain boosting function for about three hours every night to study. Every day during the day, the boosting and refreshing function is indirectly turned on, which adds up to four or five hours. So on average, he needs to start boosting and refreshing for seven to eight hours a day. And to turn on the function of boosting the brain, one little red star will be consumed every minute, 61 hour, and close to 507 or 8 hours. In 11 days, nearly 5,000 little red stars were consumed just by turning on the refreshing function. In addition, every day he stays in the small world, he will consume a hundred of them. In 11 days, more than 6,000 little red stars will be consumed. At 12 o'clock tonight, if the number of little red stars is not enough, he will be forced to return to the main world. Fortunately, although the crazy study during this period consumed a lot of little red stars, it also gained a lot. Not only have I learned very practical spells, but my knowledge of magic and the use of magic have also improved a lot compared to before. Now, all he needs is a broomstick. Too bad it wasn't Gryffindor, who couldn't get a free Nimbus 2000 from Professor McGonagall, so he had to think of other ways. At the beginning, he planned to secretly borrow an educational broomstick for flying lessons and bring it back and put it back when he returns. But after inquiring later, I found out that those teaching broomsticks used in class are stored in the teacher's dormitory where Ms. Hooch lives. Go to the teacher's dormitory to steal a broomstick, isn't that courting death? So after thinking about it, he felt that he had to find another way. I carefully recalled the contents of several movies in my mind, especially after the refreshing function was turned on. He finally found a place where he could get a broomstick for free in his memory. That is, the room of requirement at Hogwarts. He remembered that in the movie, it seemed that when Goyle or Crab cast the Demerblaze curse in the room of requirement, the three of Harry found three broomsticks and escaped. The room of response should be on the eighth floor. Carefully pushing open the stone door, Jerry came to the basement corridor. Return to the first floor along the hallway, and then enter the second floor from the luxurious marble staircase on the first floor. On the second floor, there are 142 moving magic stairs. Although these magic stairs like to move around, their movement and connection also have certain rules. The prefect had already told them these rules on the first day of school. There are portraits hanging on the walls around the stairs. Most of the characters in these portraits are asleep at this time, and there are a few who are not asleep. Seeing Jerry appear, they didn't make too much noise. Reaction. It happens every year that the little wizard goes to the castle at night in violation of the regulations. The small team with Harry's father in the front, the Weasley twins in the middle, and the Iron Triangle with Harry in the future. So as long as you don't get caught red-handed by Filch and the teacher on patrol, then there won't be any problems. Jerry also knew in his heart that these portraits on the wall were actually Dumbledore's eyeliner, and Dumbledore probably knew roughly everything that happened in the castle. But he wasn't worried, because Dumbledore would not interfere with the night tour of the castle, and he didn't go to the library to steal books, but went to the 8th floor to find the room of requirement, knowing that it was not a big deal. Stepping on the magic stairs, Jerry walked towards the 8th floor as carefully as possible. However, just as he stepped onto the corridor on the 8th floor, a small figure appeared on the guardrail of the corridor on the 8th floor. Taking a closer look, it was Filch's pet cat, Mrs. Norris. Meow. Seeing that Mrs. Norris yelled at him, and was about to turn around to report to Filch, Jerry quickly took out a secret weapon he had prepared from his left pocket and threw it at Mrs. Norris. Click. A small grilled and brown trout landed in front of Mrs. Norris. Mrs. Norris looked at the grilled fish in front of her, and immediately stopped her catwalk. Meow, woo. It looked at Jerry hesitantly, as if to say, are you bribing meow? Am I that unsteady meow? Seeing this, the corners of Jerry's mouth slightly raised, and he took out a grilled brown small trout from his right pocket again and threw it over. Since you didn't refuse immediately, it means that you are already tempted, as long as you add the amount, the problem will not be too big. After all, what cat can say no to fish? Sure enough, after a while, Jerry calmly walked past Mrs. Norris, who was engrossed in eating, and looked for the possible location of the room of requirement. Found it. Jerry looked at a giant blanket hanging in the corridor, his eyes lit up. 
At this time, a wizard on the giant carpet was trying to teach the troll to dance, but was chased by the troll with a big stick. If he remembered correctly, the white wall opposite this huge tapestry should be the entrance to the room of requirement. Since having the function of boosting the brain, Jerry found that as long as he turned on this function and tried to recall the memories of his previous life, many forgotten memories would clearly reappear in his mind. This also allowed him to gradually recall all the Harry Potter movies he had seen in his previous life, as well as related news, small videos and some small science. This way of entering the room of response is what he saw in a small science popularization in his previous life. I need that hiding place. Jerry kept thinking about this, and walked past the white wall three times in a row. Crack. On the blank white wall, suddenly a very smooth door appeared out of thin air. Nice. With a smile on Jerry's face, he grasped the brass handle, opened the door, stepped over the threshold and walked in. It was a room the size of a church, and it was filled with as many hills of various items that had been hidden by students who had been at Hogwarts. However, most of them are useless things, such as bottles, hats, boxes, chairs, bats and so on. But there are also very useful ones, just like the main goal of Jerry's coming in this time flying broom. After searching for a while, in addition to finding a broomstick that doesn't look too old, Jerry also accidentally found a few magic books that look very good. Common spells and solutions, outwit black magic, self-defense spell collection, fighting poison with poison. It was an unexpected gain this time. Of course, he also saw the legendary diadem of Raw and Claw, one of Voldemort's horcruxes, on a pockmarked bust of a wizard. But he didn't care too much. That thing is of no use to him now, he has no ability to destroy it and if he takes it, it will be affected by Voldemort's soul inside, so it's better to ignore it. It's 12 o'clock so soon. I didn't expect that time passed so quickly when I was rummaging through it. Jerry quickly grasped the broomstick with his left hand, while holding the magic wand and a box of BB's multi-flavored beans reserved in advance with his right hand, while holding the magic books, waiting for 12 o'clock to come. Because the number of little red stars is not enough, a forced return has started, and the countdown starts, 10, 9, 8, 73, 2, 1. Following the prompt on the strange panel, the whole world has once again come to a standstill. Jerry, what are you doing with that weird broom and stick? Still holding, what book is this? When Jerry opened his eyes again, he was back at home in Queens, New York. However, at the same time, he heard the doubtful voice of his younger sister Aisha. It seems that next time we enter the small world, we need to find a time when no one is around. Holding a broomstick, magic wand, BB multi-flavored beans, and holding a magic book, Jerry sat on the sofa, looked at his sister who was staring at him, and made a secret decision in his heart. This broom, I just bought it during the day to clean the room. This wooden stick is actually a tool I bought for stirring soup. As for these books. Seeing the suspicious look in Aisha's eyes, he immediately said with a smile in his heart. These books are a complete set of mathematics for elementary school students that I bought specially for you, so that you won't be bored during summer vacation. What? Jerry, what are you talking about? Oops, you actually sneak attack, you actually cast hypnotic magic on the queen. As soon as Aisha heard that it was related to mathematics, she reacted very quickly, and jumped off the sofa without watching TV. Then, holding his head, he swayed as if performing Lingbo Weibu, rushed into his room, and slammed the door shut. Jerry twitched his mouth when he saw this, took the broomstick and the magic book, turned off the TV, and returned to his room. He knew what his sister's biggest weakness was, and that was mathematics. As a subject that she had never passed since she was in school, Aisha hated mathematics. And whenever Jerry wants to tutor his sister in math, there will be a situation like today, where he is suddenly hit by various magic. It's 8 o'clock in the evening, and Haas is on the night shift today, so he won't come back to sleep at night, so when Jerry returned to his room, he fell asleep right away. When the alarm clock rang at 12 o'clock, he opened his eyes and quietly left the community with his broomstick. Avoiding pedestrians and ubiquitous cameras all the way, Jerry cautiously came to an abandoned factory that he had discovered during his previous patrol. It's not that he is overly cautious, it's just that the power of technology cannot be underestimated sometimes. 
In a modern city full of cameras, it is easy to find out his true identity if someone finds clues. After entering the factory, Jerry pulled off the hood of the sweater on his head and took the broomstick out of the large black plastic bag. Sweep Samsung. Looking at the words marked on the broomstick, he knew that it was a very outdated broomstick. Because of the consideration of the broomstick, in the library a few days ago, he specially borrowed a book called The History of the Origin and Development of the Flying Broom, and another, Guide to the Initial Use of the Flying Broom, to watch. Sweeping Samsung's Flying Broom belongs to the sweeping series developed by Sweeping Broom Company. It was released in 1937, which means that the broom he took from the room of requirement has a history of several decades. But maybe it hasn't been used much, and it doesn't look too old. Two puffs. Putting the broomstick on the ground, Jerry recalled the spells he had learned in the introduction to using the broomstick, and slowly stretched out his right hand. The magic power in the body emanates from the right hand along with the spell, and is closely connected with the broomstick on the ground. The broomstick rolled happily on the ground, and then, stopped. Quote dot quote. Jerry shook his eyebrows a little speechlessly. It seems that not only is his aptitude for learning magic not good, but he also has no talent for flying broomsticks. Before he was full of confidence that if he took the broomstick class, he would definitely crush Harry and become the most beautiful boy in the class, but now it seems that he is a bit sloppy. Although his body is strong, he must be very flexible to control the broomstick to fly in the air, but the premise is that he can let the broomstick fly first. Turn on, boost brain boosting. In order not to waste time, Jerry directly entered the Superman form. Relying on his super brain, he began to repeatedly practice the spells of controlling the broomstick, and quickly improved his proficiency. With the help of refreshment, in less than five minutes, he had fully mastered the spell technique of controlling the broomstick. Since there are more than 30 little red stars left now, after mastering the technique, he immediately stopped consuming little red stars. Two puffs. Chanting the spell again, this time the broomstick fell into his right hand very smoothly. Riding on the broomstick, under the control of the mind, the broomstick carried Jerry to float. Go. With an order, the broomstick slowly accelerated and flew towards the other end of the warehouse. When he was about to hit the wall, he pulled it up again, and the broomstick narrowly avoided it and flew back again. Ha ha, Ness, Ness, controlling and sweeping Samsung, Jerry flew in the warehouse with Curry, which was a joy. The happiness of a man is so simple. Even though Jerry's soul is close to 40 years old, riding a broom that can fly freely in the air is still a very happy thing. When people reach middle age, they will become more mature and stable due to various life pressures and responsibilities. But in fact, when he is alone or with peers with the same interests, you will find that he will actually show a naive and childish side. Excitedly in the warehouse, Curry flew up and down, left and right, and even lost control a few times and almost hit the roof. Jerry finally fully controlled the use of the broomstick. Time to go outside and try it out. Looking at the time, it was not one o'clock. Jerry changed his sweater, put on the wizard suit he brought out picked up his wand and broomstick, and walked out of the warehouse. Woohoo! Compared with the little space in Curry, flying in the vast sky on a broomstick obviously requires a much higher experience. The cool wind in the early morning of summer whistled in my ears, and the wizard's robe fluttered with the wind, like a pair of black wings. The maximum speed of 60 miles per hour is equivalent to the speed of a car at 100 kilometers per hour. Although it is not particularly fast, Flying freely in the air without hindrance is much more exciting than driving on the ground. However, this can only be done in summer. If you fly like this in winter, you will probably have to go to the hospital the next day to hang up the water and take cold medicine. After flying for a while, feeling that he was about to be blown into a fool by the cold wind in the sky, Jerry began to lower his height, shuttled between tall buildings, and flew towards other places he could not reach before. Before, because he ran all by his legs, the scope of his patrols was not large, mainly in some streets and alleys around his community. And because of his frequent haunts, the crime rate near the community has been greatly reduced, which has also reduced his efficiency of earning little red stars. Now that he has a broomstick, the range of patrols can be expanded, and he doesn't have to worry about being too late to go home. 
Flying in the air, the line of sight is definitely much better than the line of sight below, and can detect some illegal and criminal behaviors more accurately and quickly. Queens, in a duplex building on the top floor of a high-end community building. A family of three was tied to the ground with a rope. Two masked robbers, one tall and one skinny, were asking the head of the family's father for the password to the safe with a knife. Although the father was very angry, but for the safety of his family, he reluctantly told the two robbers the password to open the safe. Just when the two robbers opened the safe in the bedroom, they filled the stacks of beautiful knives in the safe with excitement into the suitcases they had prepared in advance. At some point, a black figure appeared outside the glass window of the bedroom. If there is no flying broomstick, such a good thing will not happen. When Jerry was riding a broomstick between high-rise buildings, he suddenly rolled his eyes and saw a room in the building next to him. Someone was looking for a burglary, and he was immediately overjoyed. He took out his wand, and made a silent gesture towards the little girl in the bedroom who was being hugged by her mother and whose eyes widened when she saw her appear. Jerry hit the bedroom window with an unlocking spell. Click. With a crisp sound, the lock on the window opened automatically. Hearing the sound coming from the window and the cool wind suddenly blowing into the bedroom, the two gangsters who were loading money and their father and mother who were staring at the gangster turned their heads at the same time. Then, they all showed an expression of disbelief. What did they see? They saw a child in a Halloween wizard suit, riding what appeared to be a broomstick, hovering outside the window. Floating out the window. But how is this possible? This is the 28th floor, more than a hundred meters above the ground in the sky. Good evening. After opening the window, Jerry waved his wand very politely to the four people who were stunned inside. Then, before the two robbers could react from their stupefaction, they pointed their wands at each other, and two magical rays shot directly at them. All petrified. Suddenly, the two robbers who were hit by the magic light froze and fell to the ground with a bang the beautiful knives in their hands scattered all over the ground. The body-binding spell, which Jerry took a long time to find in a magic book called, Curses and Curses Breaking Curses, in the library. A very practical offensive spell, even with his magic power, it can instantly petrify ordinary adults. But the petrification here is different from the petrification of the basilisk. The body binding spell only binds your body and limbs with a magical force, but the eyeballs can move, the consciousness is still there, and a series of senses such as the five senses can function normally. After being cursed, it can be unlocked with a universal cracking spell, or it can be unlocked automatically when the time is up. But the petrification of the basilisk is different. It is really petrified into a stone, and there is no feeling at all. If there is no way to crack it, it will be no different from a corpse. The two are not the same level of magic. Flavin. After restraining the two robbers, Jerry pointed his wand at the rope on the wrist of the father in the bedroom, and used the transfiguration charm to turn it into noodles. Finally, he pointed his wand at the beautiful knife at the safe. The beautiful knife is flying. Two hundred dollar knives flew out of the safe and landed in his hand. The summoning charm, a very ancient spell, is a spell that Jerry learned in the Guide to Medieval Witchcraft. It is said that this spell will also be taught in the 4th grade charm textbook. His function is very simple, but very useful. When you try to summon an object, you have to focus and clearly visualize the object in your mind so that wherever it is, it will come flying towards you. However, this is a curse that is easy to learn but difficult to master. To put it simply, the item you summon, its weight, size, material, whether it has magic power, the distance from you, whether it is a living or inanimate item, these factors will affect the success rate of your summoning spell. Just like now, if Jerry just summoned two light and beautiful knives, it would be easy to succeed, but if he directly summoned the heavy safe, it would be very difficult. If the safe is not near him, but in another room, the difficulty will increase. If what he summons is not a safe, but something with magic power, or a living animal, the difficulty will increase linearly. Also, you can't use a summoning spell to summon a person, it won't have any effect. Even if his summoning spell has been perfected, he can't just say, Aisha comes here, and summon his sister who is lying on her back and sleeping soundly at home. My magic can only immobilize them for 10 minutes. Hurry up and call the police. These two tickets will be my reward. Putting the knife in his pocket, 
Jerry rode his broom and disappeared from the window with a swish. The father who reacted immediately broke free from the noodles in his hand, untied the rope that bound his wife and daughter, ran to the window and stuck his head out. When he saw the figure of Jerry riding a broomstick gradually disappearing in the air, he couldn't help exclaiming. Oh my god, there is magic in this world. The ten minutes that Jerry said echoed, he quickly tied up the two burglars who were immobilized by magic with a rope, and then called the police. Flying over Queens on a broomstick, he touched the $200 in his pocket, and a satisfied smile appeared on Jerry's face. What a pleasure it is to earn a little bit of money while earning a little red star. Although he doesn't know how to use magic to steal or rape, he still thinks it is acceptable to exchange for equal value and receive rewards. And he doesn't take much every time, sometimes it's just a few dollars. If the person he saves is very poor, he will take money directly from criminals. In this society, money is not everything, but without money is absolutely impossible. When watching Maguire's Spider-Man in his previous life, he always felt that since Spider-Man was so powerful, he was still so poor, it was unbelievable. And the part-time job he was doing turned out to be to deliver food every day with a spider's thread. With your strength, going to the underground boxing arena to fight black boxing is against the principle, but it should be okay to go to the construction site to move bricks, and moving bricks can earn more than delivering food. But to be honest, he still admires people like Spider-Man in his heart, because they really do good deeds without asking for anything in return, and they really help and protect others from the bottom of their hearts, even at the expense of their own time and love, life and life. At this point, Jerry thought he couldn't do it. Although he does good deeds every day, in the final analysis, he only wants to make himself stronger, and then protect himself and the loved ones he cares about. Ah, help. Hearing a cry for help from the alley below, Jerry put away his knife, turned his broom and flew towards the direction of the call for help. All petrified, the beautiful knife is flying. In less than a minute, Jerry flew up again. After learning the body-binding spell, ordinary robbers are as fragile as babies in his eyes, and the efficiency of solving problems has been greatly improved. And there will never be the embarrassing situation of being chased around by patrol police afterwards. 3 o'clock in the morning. Jerry went back to the warehouse again, changed out of his wizard robes, and returned to his living quarters with his broomstick and other items. In fact, he has a broomstick, so he can leave directly from the window of his room, and then return home through the window of the room. But doing so is not safe. Because if someone can mobilize satellite surveillance and carefully search the neighborhoods near him, it will be easy to expose his identity. Taking off and landing from the abandoned factory every time, although it cannot be completely guaranteed, at least it is an added layer of insurance. It is more troublesome to enter and leave the community with clothes behind the broomstick. When he learns any one of the disillusionment curse, apparition or untraceable growth curse, this problem will be easily solved. Meanwhile, the Queen's Police Department. In the Sheriff's Office, Haas looked at the statement in his hand, and looked at the police officer under him with a strange look. Are you sure this isn't a joke? The police officer shrugged helplessly. I also thought they were joking with me, but the statements of the three victims and the two robbers were completely consistent. They all said that a little wizard on a broom saved them with magic. Wizard. Magic. How old are you and you still believe in that stuff? I thought only my daughter would do that. Haas shook his head and threw the confession on the table. He felt that there was some unspeakable secret between the family of three and the two robbers, so they used such nonsensical reasons to fool him. And the policeman seemed to think of something suddenly, and then reminded Haas. Captain, do you think it has something to do with that kid who liked to wear a wizard's robe and act bravely a while ago? Is he? When you say it, you really look alike. They are both kids, and they both like to dress up as wizards, and they all like to go out at night. However, I haven't heard that he has a broom that can fly before. At this time, Haas also suddenly realized that in the past month, there seemed to be a child who liked to wear wizard robes and come out at night to subdue villains. And his skills are quite good. Once he met and chased for a long time but failed to catch up. Maybe that broom is a flying machine that looks like a broom. What kind of magic is it? It's some high-tech weapons, just like Iron Man. The policeman touched his chin with the expression that the truth should be. Haas nodded and agreed. 
Don't worry about him, anyway, he's helping us relieve stress, there's nothing wrong with it, but our kid's so powerful now. In the end, he thought of his son Jerry, who was also an extraordinary child. His academic performance and housework ability made him, as a father, feel ashamed of himself. But Captain, Director George told us to hunt down this kid named, Wizard, before. Although his behavior is good, it is also, illegal. Quote. The police officer reminded me again. It seems to me that their leaders are also afraid that if this continues, it will appear that our police department is incompetent. However, it is indeed quite dangerous for a child to come out to do such things every night. You can adjust the surveillance to see if you can find where the child's home is. We will come and visit at that time. Quote. Yes, Captain. Time flies, and soon a week passed like this. During this week, Jerry rode a broom around Queens every night. Once a crime was discovered, he would always appear as soon as possible, holding a wand and throwing magic over it. It is precisely because of this that the growth rate of his little red star has doubled several times compared to before. Moreover, his title of, wizard, is no longer just relegated to the area near the community, but has gradually gained some fame in the entire Queens district. So not only the police were looking for him, but some media people who racked their brains to get the news out of their performance also started to use various methods to find clues about him after hearing the news. However, Jerry acted very quickly every time, and he never stayed shortly after solving the matter, and flew away on a broom. Those media reporters with great powers and patrolling policemen can only learn what happened from the mouths of the victims and robbers. Now for the citizens of Queens, they just heard rumors that there is a kid who likes to wear wizard robes and will appear on a broom after midnight. They don't know the specific situation, and besides what they saw with their own eyes, many citizens still don't believe it. At noon on this day, Jerry practiced the god's shadowless curse silently in the living room alone while his sister Aisha was taking a nap in the room. In the week after his return, because Little Red Star earned a lot of money, he would spend, Little Red Star, generously every day to learn and comprehend the difficult spells he got from the Half-Blood Prince's notes. Hard work pays off, and now he can barely release those spells correctly. The next thing he has to do is to practice more and increase his proficiency with these spells so that they can exert their power and effect more effectively. Shen Feng Wying. Jerry waved his wand at the apple on the coffee table. An invisible sharp blade was fired from the wand, and a hole popped out of the cup on Apple's right. This accuracy still needs to be improved. After looking at the intact Apple, and then at the cup next to the Apple, Jerry shook his head helplessly. After continuous practice, now he can successfully release the god's shadowless curse, but due to his magical strength, the power used is not very great. So if he wants the shadowless magic curse to exert greater lethality in a short period of time, he must practice more to master his accuracy from another aspect. A slash on the thigh and a slash on the neck, even with the same force, have completely different lethality. He needs the invisible sharp blade issued by himself with the god's shadowless curse to strike wherever he points, preferably a fly flies by, and his invisible sharp blade can accurately cut off the fly's wings. Of course, it will take time and a lot of practice from him over a long period of time. Restored as before, throwing a restoration charm at the cup next to the apple, the cup was restored to its original state, and he practiced the shadowless charm again. However, just as his control over the Shenfeng shadowless curse became more and more precise, a series of sirens of fire trucks suddenly came from outside. So many cars. Feeling at least three or four fire trucks passing by the road outside the community, Jerry thought for a while, and immediately took out a guitar bag from the room and rushed out. If there is a fire, many people may be trapped. Once rescued, there should be a lot of little red stars in the account. Old Warehouse. Jerry quickly took out the wizard suit from the guitar bag and put it on, then cast a spell on the broomstick he took out, and rode it out of the warehouse quickly. Over there, flying high in the sky, Jerry quickly spotted the seven or eight fire trucks speeding down the street, and then the broomstick accelerated and followed them closely. Oh god, what's that? Mom, look someone is flying. This world is so crazy that someone flies on a broomstick. A crowd of citizens on the street, attracted by the siren of the fire truck, also spotted Jerry flying not far above the fire truck, and all exclaimed. 
Jerry used to act at night, so the people who could see him were those who were near the crime scene, or the police who called the surveillance afterwards. Therefore, although most people have heard of a character like a wizard, they have never seen it, and many of them still don't believe it. After all, everyone knows that in order to attract traffic, many media like to exaggerate the facts. What kind of wizard or magic is probably just a powerful magician, using blindfolds? The magician David Copperfield also performed magic tricks related to flying. But today, the day was clear and bright, and they were shocked to see a man dressed as a wizard flying across the sky on a broom that didn't look high-tech. This speed is not like magic. Jerry glanced down at the shocked crowd on the street below, but didn't care. It will only be a matter of time before the public finds out, and he has already been mentally prepared. The key is to earn more little red stars and quickly improve your own strength. As long as your strength improves, nothing else will be a problem. He is not one of those real superheroes, and he always has such concerns. Of course, it is better to maintain a positive image in front of the public, otherwise it will be troublesome to be regarded as a villain and be beaten by other superheroes. To put it more clearly, at least on the surface, he must stand on the highest point of morality, so that it is safer. For fire rescue matters like today, it is good to be high profile. Thinking of this, Jerry deliberately lowered the height of the flight, and waved friendly to the shocked New Yorkers on the street. After flying for about 10 minutes, Jerry finally saw the thick smoke rising in the distance, so he lifted off and accelerated, and rushed directly to the place where the thick smoke rose from a super shortcut in the air. The fastest speed across Samsung was 60 miles per hour, which is about 100 kilometers per hour. From the air, the super shortcut quickly left the police car of the fire brigade behind. Two minutes later, Jerry finally arrived at the scene of the fire. A small six-story building along the street here caught fire for unknown reasons. At present, there are already patrolling police officers who have arrived at the scene earlier to maintain order, and some reporters are carrying cameras and broadcasting live. Among them, Jerry also saw an acquaintance, it was the reporter Lucy who liked to shoot him before. Lucy is a little-known news reporter. During this period of time, Jerry expanded the scope of earning a little star, which caused her long-term plan to gradually go bankrupt. During the day-to-day, she received a live broadcast interview with a street hamburger restaurant, but she was only halfway through the interview, and unexpectedly encountered a nearby fire. So she immediately rushed to the scene of the fire with her camera brother and started the live broadcast. Here on Oak Street, I'm your favorite Lucy. A fire broke out unexpectedly here just now. According to the current situation, it should have started on the second floor. Now the fire has reached the fifth floor. However, except for some residents who escaped fortunately, many residents were trapped in the building. The fire brigade has not yet arrived, and the situation is very urgent. Quote. Oh God, there seems to be a man in the air. Lucy, who was reporting to the camera, heard the exclamation of the crowd watching the situation, and immediately looked up. A short figure in a wizard's robe was riding a broom, floating above their heads at some point. Quick, point the camera at that kid. He is the wizard I've been looking for all this time. Lucy's eyes lit up, and she immediately yelled at the camera brother. The camera brother reacted very quickly. He raised the camera and pointed the lens at Jerry in the air. At this time, Jerry didn't waste any time, quickly pulled out his wand from his arms, and first cast a water and fire inviolability spell on himself. This was an ancient spell that he had learned in the Guide to Medieval Witchcraft. The main function is to prevent getting wet by rain and prevent being burned by ordinary flames. It is introduced in the book that many wizards in the Middle Ages often cast this spell on themselves when they were caught by muggles and were about to be burned to prevent them from being burned to death. With the magic of water and fire, Jerry accelerated and rode a broomstick into the burning fourth floor. Looking at the fire on the second and third floors, those who could escape must have escaped and those who could not escape were probably burnt, and now they are dead bodies when they go in to rescue them. There are only people on the fourth and fifth floors, maybe there is still rescue. Help, help. Jerry, who had just rushed to the fourth floor, turned on Superman mode, and his five senses were greatly improved, heard a faint cry for help from a room not far away. Don't dare to neglect. With a thought, 
he rode a broomstick to quickly dodge the stones and steel that fell off in the aisle due to violent burning, and came to a burning red iron door. Fight back at full speed. A repelling spell knocked the loose iron door away, and Jerry rushed into the room against the flames. In the bathroom full of tiles and steam, he found a young lady in a nightgown with a wet towel covering her mouth and nose. At this time, the lady may have inhaled a little smoke, her eyes wandered, and her voice for help gradually weakened. It is estimated that if he came later, the other party would faint and be engulfed by the flames into a corpse. Water and fire do not invade. Casting a fire and water impenetrable spell on the lady in nightgown, Jerry didn't explain, just picked her up and put her on the broomstick, and flew out of the room window against the flames. I leave it to you. Landing handed the nightgown lady to the policeman maintaining order, and without waiting for the other party's reaction, he rode a broomstick into the flames again. These are all little red stars, if one less one is saved, one less little red star will be lost. After searching for a while, he found two young men at the entrance of the elevator. He probably wanted to escape by the elevator when the fire came, but he didn't expect to be directly blown down by the thick smoke. Fire and water inviolability combined with a levitation spell, Jerry rode out of the flames on a broomstick, grabbing one arm with one hand. In this way, he went back and forth between the fourth floor, the fifth floor, and the half-burned sixth floor, and rescued more than twenty residents, large and small, men and women, who were trapped by the flames and fell down by the thick smoke. During this period, the fire brigade finally arrived, and several fire trucks sprayed water for rescue at the same time, and the fire was finally brought under control. When Jerry finally put the old couple hiding on the roof of the sixth floor, hugging each other and preparing to face death together, on the ground. The onlookers and the police officers who maintained order silently raised their hands and applauded him. Hearing the applause full of gratitude around him, for a moment, he even felt that even without the little red star, it seemed pretty good. But soon he shook his head and shook off this dangerous thought. The current him is not really powerful and invincible, he is just slightly stronger than ordinary people, but he must not have such self-righteous and dangerous thoughts. Saint, that's not something that ordinary people can do, let's take care of ourselves first. This time, thank you so much, what should I call you, wizard? At this time, a policeman in a sheriff's uniform stepped up to Jerry, with a grateful look on his face. Has. Seeing the person coming, Jerry was taken aback, and then responded immediately. Wizard, I like this title very much. I have learned magic since I was a child, in order to be brave and help others. Also, Haas is a sheriff, of course he would come over if there was such a big fire in Queens. It's really admirable to have such awareness at this age. Haas first sighed, and then he was a little confused. However, you have to go back to the police station with us, we need to register your identity. I'm sorry, my situation is special. I can't go back with you, sorry. How could it be possible for Jerry to go back to the police station with Haas to register his identity? With the secrecy ability of ordinary police stations, hackers with a little stronger ability can hack in and get his information. Without waiting for Haas to react, Jerry grabbed the broomstick and flew into the sky, disappearing from everyone's eyes. Lucy and other reporters who had finally squeezed in from behind were all thrown into vain. Jerry won't be interviewed, if it wasn't for Haas who just appeared, he would have retreated on a broomstick. There are many mistakes in what he said, and he is not a professional spy or a master of psychoanalysis. If he is not careful, he may leak some of his information because of some words that he thinks are unimportant. After Jerry disappeared, Haas showed some doubts in his eyes. Why does the voice of this Mr. Wizard sound so familiar? Captain, what are you talking about? The team members behind Haas saw him muttering alone, and poked their heads curiously. It's nothing, quickly organize an ambulance to send those wounded to the hospital. To get rid of the strange thoughts in his mind, Haas hurriedly ordered to the police officer. But, that wizard, let him go like this. Director George. Is there anything I can do, you haven't seen, he can fly, can fly, can we fly? Don't talk about those useless things, it's important to save people quickly, and let the director find me when something happens. Leaving the fire scene, Jerry pulled the broomstick high into the air, and then opened his property panel. Looking at the more than 3,000 little red stars on the attribute panel, a bright smile appeared on his face. 
Saving a life is better than building a seven-level pagoda. At the scene of the fire, he saved more than 20 people and earned more than 3,000 little red stars, which was more than the sum of his hard work going out on patrol every night for a week. Sure enough, the bigger the disaster, the more little red stars he can get for participating. In fact, Jerry once tested that if he creates a disaster himself and then makes a move, he can also get a little red star. For example, if he set fire to a building and then went to rescue people, he could get a little red star. But ever since he knew about this bug, Jerry secretly decided that no matter what, he couldn't use this bug to brush little red star, because this is the bottom line. Today he can set fires, save people, and earn little red stars, and tomorrow he can get little red stars by killing people with peace of mind. Once Pandora's box is opened, it is difficult to close. A person's desire is endless, if he doesn't know how to restrain it properly, then one day, he will become a lunatic who is confused by power. At that time, even if it is to sacrifice the person he loves the most, as long as it can be exchanged for strength, he will be willing. That was something he absolutely didn't want to see. His original intention to gain power was to protect himself and his loved ones, not to gain power for the sake of gaining power. The point is, there is no airtight wall in the world, and sooner or later he will be discovered if he does this kind of thing, and then he will really become a real villain. In the world of Marvel, villains. How many survive to the end? Returning to the old warehouse, he stuffed the wizard suit and broomstick into his guitar bag. Jerry put on his hat, put on his guitar bag, carefully avoided the surveillance cameras and the crowd, and returned to his community. However, just as he opened the door and was about to enter the room, a figure suddenly jumped out from the side. Jerry, how can you go out and play alone without me? Taking a closer look, it turned out that it was Aisha who had just taken a nap and couldn't find him in the whole room. Go down to play, how could it be? I was summoned by the mysterious demon god. I went downstairs to get the super 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 powerful magic beans that can increase the magic power. Looking at Elsa who was pinching her waist and puffing up, Jerry explained with a serious face. Super 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 powerful magic beans. Elsa had a puzzled look on her face. Look, this is it. Jerry took out a box of BB multi-flavored beans prepared in advance from his pocket. Wow, there are really super 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 powerful magic beans. Elsa snatched BB's multi-flavored beans from Jerry's hand. When she saw the colorful jelly-like beans inside, her eyes immediately glowed green. Because the tooth change period is not over yet, Elsa was strictly forbidden by her father Haas to eat any candy. She has not eaten candy for a long time. Father will come back tonight, don't tell him that I went out and fetched super super powerful magic beans for you, otherwise he will be upset. Jerry closed the door and explained to Elsa softly. On the way back just now, he recalled that when he was talking to Haas, the other party's expression seemed a little wrong, and he suddenly realized that there might be something wrong with his own voice. That's right, although they were masked, they were father and son after all, so how could Haas not be familiar with his voice at all? The most important thing is size, which is what he can't hide the most now. So just in case, Aisha is going to make up for this loophole. Don't worry, Jerry, I won't tell King Hass. Aisha patted Jerry on the shoulder, and then bouncing back to the sofa to watch TV with BB Domino in her arms. Jerry actually went down secretly to buy candy for her, how could he tell his dad about this kind of thing, if dad learned the lesson, Jerry would not have any more candy for her. So sweet and delicious, Aisha threw a BB multi-flavored bean into her mouth, her eyes lit up immediately. It seemed that she had tasted toffee. Jerry shook his head, and put the guitar bag containing the broomstick and wizard suit under the bed in his room. BB flavored beans are not candies, just beans with different flavors, so it won't have any bad effect on Aisha's teeth. By the way, the super 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 powerful magic beans have many flavors, so be careful when you eat them. Ah, as soon as he finished speaking, he heard a sound of vomiting from the sofa. Obviously, Aisha had eaten something terrible. After a brief wash, he looked at the time. It was already past 5 o'clock. Jerry came to the kitchen, picked up his apron and put it on, and started preparing for dinner. When passing by the living room, he saw Aisha staring at Bibi's multi-flavored bean box, looking like she wanted to eat but didn't dare to eat it, so he couldn't help shaking his head with a smile. 
Pulling the sliding door between the kitchen and the living room, Jerry took out his wand from under his apron. Let me try it. Is this, practical home cooking magic, really practical? With a wave of his wand, the old hen that had been thawed in the pool immediately flew up and landed on the cutting board, and then rushed over with a swipe of the kitchen knife, and began to quickly chop it into chicken pieces of uniform size. At the same time, the garlic cloves flew up and molted automatically, the ginger was sliced by a fruit knife in the air, the iron pan was heated, and the cold oil was poured into the pan. The whole kitchen seemed to have self-awareness in an instant. In less than 10 minutes, a plate of braised chicken nuggets, a plate of garlic lettuce, a plate of fried shredded pork with potatoes, and a large bowl of tomato and egg soup were placed in front of Jerry. And the pots and pans used in the kitchen also began to clean themselves. It's really useful. Normally, if he cooks it himself, it would take at least an hour for the three dishes and one soup, not including the time for washing the dishes and cleaning the kitchen after cooking. But now, he just stood there waving his wand, chanting a few spells, and in less than 10 minutes, he cooked a dinner. It saves trouble and worry, saves extra time, and can read the magic book for a while, which is really very practical. In fact, at the very beginning, he naively thought that as long as he had mastered the transfiguration technique, he would be able to conjure a lot of delicacies with a wave of his magic wand. But he didn't know until he really started to learn about transfiguration. Transfiguration is not as simple as he imagined. As a separate course, it involves a lot of advanced magic knowledge and has many branches. For example, cross-species shapeshifting, body shapeshifting, transfiguration, exorcism, manifesting, and animagus shapeshifting, to name a few. But also follow the most basic GAMP deformation law. It is very clearly mentioned that when you use polymorph to change an item into another item, the effect is not permanent. Once the time is up, it will still change back to its original appearance. So, if you turn a stone into a piece of bread, that's fine, but if you eat the bread, then after the magic effect ends, you won't have the bread, but the stone. But if you turn a cup of chai into rum, that's fine. Because even if the magic is lifted, it will not cause any harm to your body. The final conclusion is that it is impossible to conjure up a table of edible delicacies out of thin air by means of transfiguration. In fact, most of the methods used by wizards to cook with magic are the methods Jerry uses now. All tools and ingredients are needed, but it saves a lot of time. However, there is a limit to using this cooking magic, that is, the wizard's own cooking skills must be passed. Because the taste of the food you cook with cooking magic will be exactly the same as the taste of the food you cook yourself. If you are a novice in the kitchen, these culinary magic tricks will not work for you. This is the same as some related housework magic. The effect of magic depends on the wizard's own housework level. Therefore, whether it is kitchen cooking magic or housework magic, they are all very simple and easy to learn magic, but if you want to have a good magic effect after casting, you need the wizard himself to have a certain level of cooking and housework. Fortunately, Jerry is quite confident about this point. His housework and cooking skills, after so many years of training, are still at the 90th level, not to mention the 100th level. It was the first time to use cooking magic, and the effect was unexpectedly good. Jerry was satisfied with the three dishes and one soup, and threw another heat preservation magic before leaving the kitchen. Haas usually doesn't get off work until around 6.30 to 7 o'clock, and there is still more than an hour before he can read the magic book for a while. There is no end to learning. If you want to use magic well, you have to spend more time studying and not relax. Shield. Headquarters. Director Nick Fury stood by the window, patiently listening to the report of the right-hand man, Agent Maria Hill. So, the capture force led by General Ross was completely defeated by the Green Titan Hulk in the form of Dr. Banner at Corvo University in Virginia. Yes, Dr. Banner has taken General Ross's daughter, Dr. Betty, and fled Corvo University without a trace. Hill nodded. Have you found out where he's going next? Nick Fury turned around and asked. Hill handed the report to Fury. According to the technical personnel of our logistics department, through the email communication records of Dr. Banner called out by the system, it can be determined that he has been in touch with a man named Mr. Lan, and seems to want to use this to find a way to restore his body to normal. Therefore, we judge that he should take Dr. Betty to find this Mr. Lan next time. Quote. Mr. Blue. 
Dr. Samuel Stern, Department of Biological Cells, Grayburn College, New York, so they're going to New York. Nick Fury frowned as he looked at the information about Mr. Lan on the information in his hand. Yes, after getting information from us, General Ross has led people to ambush near Grayburn College in advance, and wants to take Dr. Banner back to study in one fell swoop, our side. Hill had a questioning look on his face. Nick Fury thought for a moment, then replied. General Ross belongs to the military, and we can't get too involved in his actions, but judging from the current situation, they are unlikely to succeed. In this way, you go to New York yourself, and if Dr. Banner escapes the arrest, try to find a way to track his location, and then don't alarm him again. Quote. Yes, Director. Hill nodded and was about to leave. At this time, Nick Fury seemed to think of something, and then called Agent Hill again. When you go to New York this time, find time to get in touch with this kid, learn about his situation by the way, and find out his true identity. Hill took a piece of information handed over by Nick Fury, on which were some photos of Jerry wearing a wizard suit and riding a broomstick into the fire scene, as well as related information about his chivalrous actions during this period. Not long after Hill left, a female agent wearing a black combat tights, with curly reddish-brown hair and an explosive figure pushed the door and walked in. Natasha, how is the situation over there? Seeing the person coming, Fury asked without any surprise. It turns out that the person here is none other than Natasha Romanov, the Black Widow of S.H.I.E.L.D., an all-round agent who is proficient in disguise, infiltration, infiltration, hacking, and combat. At present, he has successfully mixed into Stark Industries and is Tony Stark's secretary for the time being. However, according to my observation, Tony's physical condition seems to have a lot of problems, and his mental state is not very stable. Black Widow truthfully reported the progress of the mission and the information obtained during this period to Fury. Palladium element poisoning. I know, you continue to lurk and monitor Tony Stark's body and mind, and report to me in time if you have any problems. Hearing the Black Widow's report, Fury didn't have any surprises on his expression. A week later, Queens, New York. What do you think of the wizards that have emerged recently? Wizard. I watched the live broadcast of the fire rescue. Regardless of whether he can use magic or not, I like him very much. I think he is a hero. Yes, that's it. I don't think he is a child at all. He may be a dwarf, or he may be a small old man, or he is cursed and shrunken. You see, all wizards in the story are like this. I think he's just a kid, maybe in some kind of magic school. In fact, I've always believed in magic, and I've even set up a website for it. Wizard, if you can see this report, you can enter my website, our website is 4x. Quote. Oh, what a wizard, he's just a freak, a magic clown, I don't believe in magic, science, we have to believe in science. You mean that elegant Mr. Wizard, he saved my life, I like him, or I love him, he is a child. It doesn't matter, I can accept sibling love. By the way, Mr. Little Wizard, my sister is very rich and can support you. If you have time, call me. My number is 4x. Quote. Okay, that's the end of today's street interview. It seems that most of our citizens still like Mr. Wizard who rescued more than 20 citizens at the fire scene. I'm your favorite Lucy. See you tomorrow. Sitting on the sofa, watching the report about himself on TV, Jerry was quite satisfied. Although some people expressed their dislike and distrust of him in the interviews, the majority of people recognized him, especially those who had been saved by him. No matter how perfect a person is, he cannot make everyone like him, and Jerry knows this very well. His purpose is not to make those citizens like him, as long as most of them agree and make his image positive, that's enough. After all, he saved people for Little Red Star. Jerry, how do I feel about the broom that the wizard rides, I seem to have seen it somewhere. At this time, Aisha's words next to him suddenly made Jerry's heart tighten. Forgot, when he just returned two weeks ago, Aisha happened to see the flying broom in his hand, and he explained that he bought it for sweeping the floor at home. Although the broomstick looks like a broom, after years of improvement by wizards, it still has a little difference in appearance from ordinary brooms. Wizards who know magic have been popular on major TV stations these days, and Aisha, who is obsessed with magic, will certainly not let it go. Now her first idol is the wizard played by Jerry. Ahem, 
I think that is the Snow Queen. You need a new magic robe, just like the wizards, and a broom that is exactly the same. I saw that Annie and Susan both bought the same one the day before yesterday. What? Annie and the others actually bought new equipment behind my back, huh, that's disgusting. When Aisha heard that Ann and Susan had bought the same equipment as a wizard, she immediately put aside the matter of the broomstick. That's right, I think they must have lost to you when they fought you last time, so they want to secretly buy more powerful equipment. Jerry nodded quickly, and continued. Well, it's okay now, I'll take you to Lena's magic house to buy a better set than them. Really? Jerry? You are the best, a thousand times better than dad, ten thousand times better. When Aisha heard that Jerry was going to take him to buy the same suit as the wizard, she jumped up on the sofa happily and forgot about the broomstick in a blink of an eye. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.